Good morning. Our morning prayer this morning is um, from the Anglican Prayer Book on page 42. Our readings are going to be Psalm 105 from verses 1 to 22. Old Testament reading from 1 Samuel 21. 1 to 15 and Acts 13 verses 13 to 25. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive His Holy Word to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. God is the Lord by whom we escape death. Let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 105 Verses 1 to 22 on page 735. I give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Tell among the peoples what things he has done. Sing to him, O sing praises, and be telling of all his marvelous works. Exalt in his holy name, and let those that seek the Lord be joyful in heart. Seek the Lord and his strength. O seek his face continually. Call to mind what wonders he has done, his marvellous acts and his judgment of his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen one. For he is the Lord our God, and his judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever. 
the word that ordained for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made for, uh, with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac, and confirm it to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, I will give you the land of Canaan to be the portion of your inheritance, and that when they were but few, little in number, and aliens in the land, they wandered from nation to nation, from one people and kingdom to another. He suffered no man do them wrong, but reproved even kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Then he called down famine on the land and destroyed the bread that was their stay. But he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold in slavery, whose feet they fastened with fetters and thrust his neck into a hoop of iron, till the time that his words proved true, he was tested by the Lord's command. Then the king sent and loosed him. The ruler of nations set him free. He made him master of his household and ruler over all his possessions, to rebuke his officers at will and to teach his counselors wisdom. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So our Old Testament reading is uh, Samuel 21, verses 1 to 35. 1 Samuel 21, 1 to 15. David went to the priest, Melech, in Nob. Melech came out trembling to meet him and asked, Why did you come here all by yourself? I'm here on the king's business, David answered. He told me not to let anyone know that he sent me to do. As for my men, men, I have told them to meet me at a certain place. Now then, what supplies do you have? Give me five loaves of bread or anything else you have. The priest said, I don't have any ordinary bread, only sacred bread. You can have it if your men haven't had sexual relations recently. Of course they haven't, answered David. My men always keep themselves ritually pure, even when we go out on an ordinary mission. How much more time? How much more this time when we are on a special mission? So the priest gave David the sacred bread, because the only bread he had was the loaves offered to God, which had been removed from the sacred table and replaced by fresh bread. Saul's chief herdsman, Doug, who was from Edom, happened to, to be there that day, because he had to fulfill religious obligation. David said to him, Amilech, do you have a spear or a sword you can give me? The king's order made me leave in such a hurry that I didn't have time to get my sword or any other weapon. Amilech answered, I have the sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom you killed in Elah Valley. It is behind the epot wrapped in a cloth. If you want it, take it. 
It's the only weapon here. Give it to me, David said. There is not a better sword anywhere. So David left, fleeing from Saul, and went to King Achish of Gath. The king's official said to Achish, Isn't this David, the king of this country? This is the man about whom the women sang as they danced. Saul has killed thousands, but David has killed tens of thousands. Their words made a deep impression on David, and he became very much afraid of King Achish. So whenever David was around them, he pre pretended to be insane and acted like a madman. When they tried to restrain him, he would scribble on the city gates and let spit drool down his beard. So Ahish said to his officials, Look, the man is crazy. Why did you bring him to me? Don't I have enough madness already? Sorry, did I not already? Don't I have enough madmen already? Why bring another one? to bother me with his crazy actions right here in my own house. Here ends the sec the first lesson. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David, through his holy prophet he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. He promised to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is in the book of Acts, chapter 13, verses 13 to 25. Paul and his companions sailed from Paphos and came to Perga, a city in Pamphylia, where John Mark left them and went back to Jerusalem. They went on from Perga and arrived in Antioch in Pisidia. And on the Sabbath they went into the synagogue and sat down. After the reading from the law of Moses and from the writings of the prophet, the officials of the synagogue sent them a message. Brothers, we want you to speak to the people if you have a message of encouragement for them. Paul stood up motioned with his hand and began to speak. Fellow Israelites and all Gentiles, ye who worship God, hear me. The God of the people of Israel chose our ancestors and made the people a great nation. During the time they lived as foreigners in Egypt, God brought them out of Egypt by his great power. And for forty years he endured them in the desert. He destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan and made his people the owners of the land. 
All of this took about 450 years. After this, he gave them judges until the time of the prophet Samuel. And when he asked for a king, God gave them Saul, son of Kish, from the tribe of Benjamin, to be their king for 40 years. After removing him, God made David their king. This is what God said about him. I have found that David, son of Jesse, is the kind of man I like, a man who will do all I want him to do. It was Jesus, a descendant of David, whom God made the saviour of the people of Israel. As he had promised, before Jesus began his work, John preached to all the people of Israel that they should turn from their sins and be baptised. And as John was about to finish his mission, he said to the people, Who do you think I am? I am not the one you are waiting for. But listen, he is coming after me, and I am not good enough to take his sandals off his feet. Here ends the second lesson. The Song of the Church. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you, the noble fellowship of prophets praise you, the white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son worthy of worship and the Holy Spirit. Advocate and guide, you, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father, when you became man to set us free. You humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended, descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, be gracious to our land and mercifully hear us when we call upon you. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, make your ways known upon the earth. Let all nations acknowledge your saving power. Give your people the blessing of peace and let your glory be over all the world. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Offend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. Just to share with you a couple of thoughts regarding our, um, our Acts reading today. So Paul in this, um, his sermon in the Acts reading reminds me of God's faithfulness and his, and it speaks of God's continual mercy and patience in the life of a people in my life. I mean, Paul, take the whole exodus and the choices, uh, the choosing of, of the nation and puts it out. And he says, you didn't deserve deliverance from, from Egypt, but you got it. You didn't deserve God to hang around in the wilderness. But he did. You didn't deserve the promised land, but he gave it to you. You didn't deserve judges to deliver, but he gave them. You didn't deserve a king to fight your battles, but he provided them. You didn't deserve the Messiah to come. But God sent him. I mean, Paul shows the event by which God reveals himself in a sovereign way as a saviour to Israel. I mean, verse 17 tells of the God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers. God multiplied. God not only chose them, but he multiplied them. God delivered With an uplifted arm, he left them, let them out. God, tolerance. I mean, for about a period of 40 years, he put up with the Israelites in the wilderness.
the people that keep on praising him. The people, I mean, they tested God over and over, and yet God tolerated them. God put that, put up with them. God stuck around. That also reminds me that God sticks around. He's there, even in in all the chaos of, of one's life. God chose them. He never abandoned them, nor failed to deliver them. He's the, the provider of deliverance. In verses 20, it's he gave. 21, God gave. 22, he raised. God is continually the giver or the provider, the provider of deliverance. And so after all these, he gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. Judges were deliverers, raised up by God, and yet Israel didn't particularly like the judges. They wanted a king, even though it was a rejection of God. Yet, God granted their request. I mean, verse 21, they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. Wanted a king. God provided a king. And we know that Saul wasn't the greatest king in the world. Then God rejected him. And so what did God do? After he removed him, he raised up David to be their king. Con and it says, concerning whom he also testified and said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will do all my will. So after they had a king, God provided a king, good king. And each of these were deliverers of Israel. And all the judges and the kings were all provided by God to deliver his people. And I think that is what Paul reminds them in this message of Acts. That we have God who has chosen to be our Savior, who has never failed to provide us with a deliverer. I mean, judges, kings, and then ultimately the Messiah. And just as God provided deliverers in the past, God has provided a deliverer today. 
So in in essence, God hasn't changed. He is still saving. He is still providing a deliverer. Just as he always done. But unfortunately, Israel didn't change. We don't change. We don't deserve another chance. But that isn't the nature of God. God is the greatest giver of second chances, his, his patience and his mercy. That gives me great courage. His mercy and patience and knowing that God is not the type of God who will abandon his people. And God has opened multiple doors for us to respond. God gives us continual second chances. And I want to say today, thank you, Lord, for all the second chances you have given each of us. And thank you for not giving up on us. Amen. Blessing and honor and thanksgiving and praise more than we can utter, more than we can understand, be to you, O glorious and holy trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, from all angels, all peoples, all creatures, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son has promised that whenever we pray in his name, you will hear us, answer our prayers as may be best for us, granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, the fullness of eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. May the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord Make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Have a blessed day.